In our last lesson, you saw the most basic program you can write in Java. In spite of this, there were probably several components of the finished program that seemed quite foreign to you. Unfortunately, there are some essential components of every Java program that are difficult to explain to beginning programmers. First is the idea of the class. A class is a way to define your own data type, which you will do later on in the course. Even if you are not creating your own type, however, your code must be run from inside of a class. Each Java file consists of a single class, and the file you save must have the same name as the class. The format for classes declare is to declare it public. Use the class keyword, type a name for the class, and then a set of braces which signify the body of the class. Most development environments will do this basic form for you when you create a new class. Inside a class, we write methods, which are sequences of statements that are run when the method is called upon. To begin, we write our code in the main method, which is called automatically to start our Java program. The format of the main method is to type public static void main, followed by a set of parentheses with string, a set of square brackets, and then a shorthand term for arguments, args. Put a set of braces after this, and then your lines of code will reside within them. We'll avoid explaining all of these words you typed for now. Just know that this method must look like this in all of your programs in order for it to run correctly. Now let's talk about the idea of program syntax in Java. There are many rules for writing code. When you don't follow these rules, your program will fail the compile process. Usually you will see a message specifying a syntax error, but it isn't always so clear. The more you practice writing code, reading the messages from the compiler, and then working to fix them, the better you'll get. Here are some basic rules for writing code to keep in mind. There are two major components of code. These are blocks and statements. A statement is a single executable instruction. A block can contain multiple statements. Statements usually involve the reserving of new memory, an assignment of some results to a variable, or a call to a method. All statements will end with a semicolon. Blocks exist in many more forms, but they usually have a header followed by braces. The class header and the method header are examples of blocks you saw in the first program we wrote. The line that printed to the screen is an example of a statement. In it, we use the print method to write output. That print method was prefaced by the words system and out, and each part was separated by a period. The period connects components in a way much like the slash is used to separate folders in a files path. We'll speak more about this when we explore classes and methods in a future topic. Java allows you to name many things as you code, but there are certain keywords that have meaning and can't be used. The list is not worth exploring in detail, but note that if there is a word that turns color when you type it, you cannot use that word for your own purposes. One such word is import, which you can use to add special pre-written functionality to your code. An example would be to import the math library when we want to use math functions beyond basic arithmetic. Another is to bring in special tools such as the scanner, which allows us to read input from the keyboard or a file. You can leave notes in your code that will be ignored by the compiler. We call these comments or reminders, also known as rems. A single line comment uses two forward slashes. A multi line comment starts with slash star and ends with star slash. White space is ignored in Java. This is not always true in programming languages, so be careful when trying other languages out. Python, for instance, uses white space to help define blocks. In our next lesson, we'll look at some suggested formatting rules for writing code.